Okay? Now it works. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you to the workshop How to Sell to Game City here in the workshop room. And uh, I have two news, one bad, one good one. The bad one is that uh, Martin Lorber, who was announced to take part here in the discussion, uh, can't take part and he's very sorry about it. But the good one is that uh, Johan Zürberg is here and we <laughs> make a little interview and uh, afterwards you are free uh, to ask your questions if you have one and uh, I'd like to develop a little discussion here. Um, okay, I start with a little introduction. Johan Zürberg is a uh, lead agent from the digital development management from Sweden and uh, he has a lot of extensive experience in the game development and design and has produced a number of titles, titles from publishers like EA and it doesn't work. So I try to speak a little bit louder. Can you hear me all? Produced, uh, Johan Sjöberg has produced numerous title, titles uh, for publishers like EA, Activision, and so on. And before join, joining the digital development management in May 2008, John was business developer, uh, the business development manager for Penny Grosso. And first of all, I'd like to give you a brief insight into the German market of gaming because that's the that's the issue and the title of this of this workshop and uh, maybe you need an orientation uh, at the moment or uh, as my facts and figures says one uh, to 21 million German use computer and video games and that's a very huge number it's 29 percent of the population over 40 years and 23% uh, of, of this um, population uses a uh, computer as a, as a technical device to play the game, and 10% game pad, and 5% uh, mobile phones, and 2% only handhelds or mobile game pads. And uh, what is to say about the market? There are some major trends in the German market. The one is uh, online and social gamings, and uh, the figure for that is 45% of the population under 30 years uh, are playing online or social games in Germany. And they use or they prefer especially strategic, casual gaming or adventure and no real act, um, no real fightings or ego shooters or something like that. And uh, another major trend you can uh, see in Germany are the trend to use uh, serious games, which means e-learning or um, some medical stuff. And uh, they try to develop in the German market other uh, target groups. Um, like the elder ones, or families, or more female target group. And maybe, uh, Joanne, you can comment a little bit on this uh, different tendencies in the German market and maybe widen it to a worldwide perspective for us. Okay, I'll try to do that as best as I can. I'm not sure if everybody hears me. Um, so the, the German market is very different from the rest of the world in terms of uh, games consumption and has always been. Uh, when we've seen trends on a worldwide basis, there's always been particulars happening in Germany that couldn't be understood or extrapolated to the outside world. So, for instance, uh, Germany, when the big console boom happened, during the late 90s and the PlayStation took over the living rooms and then later the Xbox. Uh, Germany still remained a very, very strong market for 
PC games in particular, and uh, then even more so for role-playing games and strategy games, etc. Now, what's happened in Germany, and what's been interesting to see over the last few years has been that the free-to-play trend that launched in Asia, particularly in China, has caught on very, very fast in Germany, and Germany being the leading market in Europe, and I'd say probably the rest of the world as well, for uh, the free-to-play games that we saw being talked about a little bit earlier in the first session, and uh, here in Germany we've got especially two major companies specializing in this area, Big Point and Gameforge, and then also of course in the social games and the social media space. Germany has to be catching on extremely fast, being uh, one of the largest growth markets for those types of things. So it's been interesting to see how it took kind of one uh, paradigm shift from PC to console, and then now starting to move back into the free-to-play market and the PC market again for Germany to kind of more align itself with the worldwide market and also have the potential to partially leave because we're seeing Gameforge and Big Point making forges into the North American markets. And what's it like in the, in the more European or worldwide perspective? Uh, on a worldwide perspective, the, we, there's really too many trends to just make one big bold statement, but what we're seeing, of course, is that uh, first of all, it's becoming easier to play games on the device that you prefer. So people are increasingly capable of getting some kind of gaming experience on, say, their mobile devices, uh, a handheld device like the very popular uh, DS from the Nintendo, uh, or there are also devices in the consoles segment uh, where the PlayStation was dominant for almost a decade, the Xbox came and addressed the hardcore gamer, and then Nintendo, a couple of years ago, made a huge break into the living room of the families, women, etc., with their launch of the week where they were addressing completely new target groups. So what we're seeing there is essentially a, a niche growing, or large niches growing, if you're capable of addressing the right target demographic, and I think that's what you're really going to keep seeing over the next few years as well, is going to become increasingly more relevant to strategically identify the target group that you're selling to, uh, and make experiences that are tailored for that. We're still on a worldwide basis, the hardcore gamer is a very, very large part of the games industry today. There was a lot of talk in 2009, which was for the general economy uh, a complete disaster. Um, people had initially said that the games industry was going to be recession proof, and uh, it obviously wasn't. Uh, but what we saw with the games industry at that point was that the part of the games industry that actually was recession proof was the hardcore target demographic, where the games industry in 2009 an overall sort of decline, particularly in the family games, and the Wii market, etc. Uh, the hardcore gamers market actually grew. So people were paying more, as we say in Germany, eco shooters, or we, as we say internationally, FPS, first person shooters. Uh, they were buying more uh, games of that type, but they were buying less family games. So the, are the, the heavy gamers? Uh, Absolutely. To just give a quick summary of uh, what we do so that you people in the audience can understand better what it might be sensible to ask me about uh, later on, is that EDM is the world's largest uh, talent agency for video develop game development companies. So we represent a number of the greatest independent, independent video game development companies in the world. The majority of our clients are based in North America and Europe, where my responsibility is working predominantly with the European clients to help them secure business, either with publishers, as the traditional business model is in the video games industry, that we saw a bit about earlier as well today, 
which is essentially the same as it's in the book business or in the traditional music business where you go to your record company for a lot of money. So that's what we have to do. And most of those companies that we work with uh, work with games that are addressed towards the hardcore gamers demographic. But we've also just recently launched one division that's focusing on the social media space and also one division that's focusing on not representation but services uh, to other people or companies interested in entering the games industry or finding an outlet, for instance, for license holders, uh, creators of different kinds to come in and elevate their talent into the game space. Circus, who is most known for his work. 